Let's start with a few questions. What is the most impactful element of a design? Is it the color? Is it the shapes that you used in the design? Is it the layout? Is it space? Or is it the fonts in the design? Well, a good design consists of a balance of all these things. A proper harmony. And, to maintain proper harmony alongside other elements in the design, fonts, or in more accurate terms, typography has an important role. This single element can ruin a gorgeous design. And, it can also brighten a dull design. In this video, we will talk about this particular element of a design. We will try to cover some basic rules and terms that professionals use. And, we will also try to cover how to choose proper fonts for a design. Hi, I am Alex from Essential Web Apps. And, we make videos on WordPress, website and social media strategy, web design, and development. To see our regularly uploaded videos, please hit the subscribe buttons and click the bell icon for notification. Let's start simple. What is typography? In simple words, it is the visual components of written words on a surface. That surface could be paper, posters, billboards, signs, websites, anything. And, typography has lots of components to consider. Don't worry about these terms now. We will go through these step by step. But before we get into the technicalities of this, you may need to know why you really need this. Why you need to understand these components anyway. Well, the goal of typography is to present the text in a way so the text could be clear, legible, and useful. So, it should not look like this, or this, or this, and never like this. Anyway, at the end of the day, your message should be properly conveyed so that your reader can understand it without scratching their head. Now, let's talk about these two words. If you are a beginner, you might hear of these two words used by professionals. I personally used to think, these are the same words. But, these are not. A typeface is a set of designs for letters and other characters. So, for Montserrat, this is the typeface. A particular shape of the letters and characters. The font is the variation of size and weight of that typeface. There is another popular term called, font family. And, don't confuse it with the typeface. The set of this whole variation is called the font family. So, this is a typeface, this is a font and this is font family. Now, there are some elements that a typeface contains. Cap height, baseline, X height, descenders, ascenders. Now, X height can be high, or low. This is the gap between these two lines. So, this is an example of a high X height and this is a low X height. The difference in the X height can impact the legibility of the text content. Descenders and ascenders are also vital. Some fonts may not have descenders or ascenders and can create this type of confusion. It is vital for accessibility for dyslexia. You need to understand the types of typefaces. If you understand the classes, you can easily find and choose what your project may need. There are five basic classifications of the typeface. Serif, sans serif, script, monospaced, and display. Serif font has this extra stroke on the letters and create ascenders in a font. So, a serif font can remove this confusion very easily. Sans serif does not have the extra stroke that a serif typeface has. Sans simply means without. Script typefaces are basically based on handwriting. In UI design, these types of typefaces are used for decorative purposes. Monospaced fonts have the same amount of horizontal space between each character. You may see this type of typeface for code snippets on a web page. The display is a typeface that used for headings for most of the cases. May be used once in UI design. Well, mostly in the hero section. There are system fonts that you can access easily from your system. That would be your Windows PC, MacBook, Linux, Android, or an iPhone. But there are two major cons here. The collection of the typeface is small. And if any system does not have that font installed, your website might not show the proper design. That's why developers do a thing called font stacking. But, the best way is to use a web font. The advantage of this is, even though the font is not installed in your system, you will still be able to see the font on the website. For that, you can use the most popular font library by Google. You can choose any font from here that you like, and install it in your system. Developers link that font directly into the code. And, the font loads from the server but not from the system. Installing a font into the system is very simple. Choose what font you like. Click on it. Now click on Download Family. 
Unzip it. Double click on it, then install. This is a true type format. There are some other formats. Open type, true type, EOT, WAF, and SVG. The open type has the most customization option and has cross-platform compatibility. True type is an old format and has some limitation that open type don't have. EOT is created by Microsoft, but it only works on Internet Explorer. Finally, WAF is specially created for websites, as it is more compressed and helps to load a website faster. SVG is not a recommended format for websites design. So, next time when you choose a typeface, look for format also for your design consideration. If you are making a font bold, is it a real bold or a fake bold? Well, software or CSS can create a fake bold or fake italic if it doesn't find the font style in the font family. You might think, this doesn't matter. But for some font, this does matter. You see, typeface designers create a special design for italic style that might look like a totally different font. Or may create various thicknesses of a single typeface. Not just simple bold style. So, always try to choose a typeface that has a full set of a font families. As a designer, you may use the unit called Pixel. It is a fixed type unit that related to the screen that you are using. But, developers may use some other units for the development work. Because they have to deal with fluid layout. That means those units are helpful for adjusting the font size with multiple screens, like desktop, tablet, or mobile. Some of the units are REM, M, PT, and percent. The unit M is the most popular one used in CSS. REM is also used very frequently. In the case of alignment, text can be justified or unjustified. Well, there are left align, right align and middle align. And these are self-explanatory. But, in the case of justifying text, do not do this. This creates a blank river between text and makes it hard to read. Always enable hyphenation during text justify. Font scaling is something that you have to do for various reasons. Two of those are, designing UI for multiple screen sizes, and to create a hierarchy. I made videos on creating UI design for multiple screens and how to create a hierarchy for a UI design. You will find the links in the description. In one of the videos, I have shown how to create a hierarchy using a golden ratio number. Here's a site called typescale.com. You can easily make a properly scaled set using this. As you see, it has various types of scales, including the golden ratio. I'm gonna choose the perfect fourth. You always have to do the experiment and see what fits best for your design. After you set the hierarchy, you set all the headings and paragraphs. Now, what are perfect paragraph properties? A perfect paragraph may contain 45 to 75 characters per line and may have three to four lines per paragraph. This will help your reader to read the text easily. It is not too long, which may get exhausting and not too short, which may create confusion because readers have to go back and forth very frequently. Now, let's get into the more fine-tuning of the text. First, let's talk about spacing between letter forms. There are two types of spacing methods, tracking and kerning. Tracking is general letter spacing, which affects the whole text. We can create a heavy look by tight tracking, and create a more comfortable feel by loser tracking. Normally, we can tweak from 3% to 5%, either plus or minus, for the proper but comfortable looks. Kerning is far more precious than tracking. Kerning is tweaking the specific character combination rather than the whole text like tracking. Type designers sometimes set the custom spacing between characters for better fit, or looks, or visibility. Normally, a well-designed font family does not need kerning. If you have to use some font, that has bad kerning. Only then you may have to do the adjustment. But, my suggestion is to go for another typeface with good kerning. Line heights or leading is the space between the baseline of two lines of text. Well-structured typography may have a range from 135% to 185% line height. And, as the font size increases, the line height decreases. So, if you use 150% for body text, you may use 120% for heading, and gradually increase the number as you decrease the font size. A grid system can create a proper rhythm of the text, by which the reader can easily recognize which heading goes with which body text, and when a paragraph ends and another one starts.
as I did in Figma here, you can see proper rhythm texts. And, everything is easily recognizable. Now, let's talk about accessibility. First of all, you have to consider the color contrast of the font against the background. If you use a certain type of color combination or certain shades of color, it might be difficult for a colorblind person to read it easily. Even in some cases, a normal person may find it difficult to read. For ensuring the proper accessible color, you can use this site called Colorable. You will find the link in the description. If it shows AAA then this the best contrast. Then there is AA, which is also acceptable. If it says, AA large, that means it is only acceptable for larger fonts. Then, text style and arrangements are also important for accessibility. If it's a link, make it like a link. Do not make some text, just like the link text, which may not contain any links. Lists should be properly indented, bulleted, or numbered. And, quotes should be distinguished from other body text. So, that it can be easily identifiable. Most of the time when you design an UI, you might need to use more than one font for better visual and also accessibility. So, what you have to do is select two or more different fonts and use them in your design. But selecting fonts are not random at all. Not all fonts look good with each other. There are better fit font pairs to choose from. If you go to Google Fonts, select a font, and scroll down, you may find these suggestions for font pairing. This is another site, where you can see some real examples of font pairing in action. Do the research, test your design, and then select fonts for your site. So, there you go. Typography is a big topic, and I've tried my best to cover almost everything in this video. But, if I missed anything please let me know in the comments section. If you like this video, please like and share. And, I will see you in the next video.